The U.S. Supreme Court hears oral arguments in a case that would shield millions of undocumented immigrants from deportation. A prominent human rights group calls for countries like Nigeria that have the death penalty to stop using the ultimate punishment. And a school in Ivory Coast educating that nation's next generation of architects. Africa 54 starts right now. Hello and welcome. I'm Vincent McCorry, Voice of America, coming to you from our global headquarters in Washington. And I'm Cynthia Are in Lagos. Stay with us in the next half hour for news and stories from Nigeria and the world in this edition of Africa 54. The U.S. Supreme Court heard oral arguments a week ago in a case that would shield millions of undocumented immigrants from deportation and grant them the ability to work in the U.S. Viewers Chris Simpkins has more on the debate before the high court. Passionate demonstrations outside the U.S. Supreme Court. The court is deciding the legality of President Barack Obama's executive actions on immigration. The measure would allow some four million undocumented immigrants to live and work temporarily without fear of deportation. They also would bar deportations that separate families. Cesar Moreno Perez represents a teachers union. Our members are in the front lines and they know firsthand what it means when a child comes to school with fear. Fear that their parents are not going to be home. Fear for themselves that they may be picked up on their way home. President Obama announced his plan in 2014, saying it would protect undocumented immigrants who have been in the U.S. since at least 2010 and who have a child who is an American citizen. If you meet the criteria, you can come out of the shadows and get right with the law. If you're a criminal, you'll be deported. The court appeared divided between its liberal and conservative justices during Monday's hearing. Six-year-old Sophie Cruz, born in this country, spoke to the court. We want the same rights for all. I ask the judges to protect us children and all immigrants. But there's strong opposition to Obama's plan from 26 states suing the government as well as Republican lawmakers. The White House has obviously granted broad sweeping group category amnesty and they can't make the argument legitimately that they've applied this on an individual basis only. So, Immigration attorney Alan Orr was in the court. Today it's sort of clear that the justices are sort of on the side of the United States government because they don't want states to be able to challenge every executive action that sort of exists. While passions remain heated over the case, the Supreme Court is not expected to issue a ruling until late June. If the justices are split, a lower court ruling stands. It overturned Obama's executive orders. Chris Simpkins, VOA News, Washington. Now the death penalty is the highest form of punishment handed down by courts. And Amnesty International is calling for countries like Nigeria that have the death penalty to stop using it. Although the death sentence in Nigeria is on the decrease, the Global Rights Group is asking Nigeria to halt all executions. This next report examines the situation. The right to life is a universal right. Some countries have, however, placed limitations to the enjoyment of this right by their citizens. Nigeria is one of the countries which has limited this right with the imposition of the death penalty. Offenses punishable by death include murder, armed robbery, aiding the suicide of a child, treason and conspiracy to treason, and kidnapping in about 10 states in the southeast part of the country. In the north, about 12 states which practice Sharia and Islamic law also use a death penalty for incest, homosexual sodomy, rape and adultery. The Nigerian army also punishes mutiny with the death penalty. Terrorism and support for terrorist acts that result in death also carry the death penalty. There, however, appears to be a shift towards the abolition of the penalty. Amnesty International says that as of July 2015, 102 countries have abolished the death penalty for all crimes in law, while 140 countries have abolished the penalty in law and in practice, a figure which is nearly two-thirds of countries around the world. 
In Nigeria, available statistics as of 2010 suggest that almost half of Nigerians support the use of the death penalty. I would even prefer that uh, we, we try to we introduce death penalty into corruption, like they have in China, so that uh, that, that will serve as, as a very serious uh, check to uh, this corruption that is uh, becoming uh, a clog in the wheel of a success in this country. You don't have the right to take someone's life away. So we have to recognize that fact. And uh, we still believe the judiciary and our lawmakers can consider at every time um, life imprisonment. The chief registrar of the Lagos State Judiciary says groups opposed to the death penalty need to lobby the legislature. Judiciary is not saddled with the responsibility of making the laws. That is the function of the House of Assemblies in the state and the National Assemblies at the federal level. So I think the, the NGOs who are championing the elimination of uh, capital offenses should attempt to pressurize the, the different houses of assembly, particularly at the national level, so that the matter can be given adequate uh, consideration. Nigeria leads the list of countries sentencing the most people to death. A prison commander says the reluctance of governments to sign death warrants also leads to congestions of the prisons. What I am advocating is that a situation where if somebody is condemned, maybe per virtual within a matter of months, they are given life imprisonment, in which case, instead of them congesting one particular area, because like in Lagos State, the only place you can keep condemned convicts is the maximum prison. And the number is actually high, well, around 70-something inmates. For a place that is maybe pre, uh, actually was supposed to contain about 70 people. The Attorney General of Ogun State perhaps speaks the minds of most governments when he says that governments take the sanctity of life seriously and the process of signing death warrants goes through a rigorous process that will stand the test of time. I think where we should be heading, really, is twofold. One, that the society evolves to such a, situ uh, such a position that we all have some sort of uh, rebirth that uh, Amnesty International and others uh, who hold that kind of view begin to hold an holistic, look at it from an holistic trend to see how we can improve society as a whole from uh, such base elements and moving us up. Uh, so that we wouldn't have the debate in the first place. The other aspect is to continue to strengthen our judicial institutions, to strengthen the administration of criminal justice uh, 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 processes and procedures. Indeed, the possibility of sentencing and executing innocent people is real. And until the country gets the administration of justice right, perhaps there is a compelling need to revisit the issue of the death penalty. We want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation. Join Africa 54 on Facebook and check out our headlines 24-7 on VAAfrica.com. Well, coming up, more on the death penalty and how it is applied in Nigeria. Cynthia has the in-depth discussion right after the break. Stay with us.